Hey everyone, Matt from Stronger Personal Training here. Today we're rolling through three tips you can do to improve your low bar position in your squat without having to do extra mobility work or anything like that. Just cueing and different positional changes. So, number one, this is a really, really easy one, is just switching to a thumbless grip. A lot of lifters are gonna grip onto the bar with a full grip, and what this does, at least in a low bar position, is it limits how much you can externally rotate the wrist, meaning your ability to open the shoulders up like that. Now, in a low bar position, we want lots of external rotation in the shoulders because that's what's gonna let us get under the bar without having to flare up our ribs or compensate at some other joint. So the thumbless grip simply allows us to open up the hand a little bit more, which in turn allows us to open the shoulder a little bit more because it creates more room to move at that shoulder joint. The difference is very significant, actually. So I'll show you kind of with my current grip on my low bar. From here, this is with my thumbs. And you can see I'm really fighting to stay upright. I'm really fighting to keep the bar on my back. And I can't keep as much tension as I would like here. Whereas, if I go into a thumbless grip, I can open up my chest a lot more. My shoulders and my rear delts contract tighter. And right off the bat, you can see I'm in a way better position. So tip number one, open up your thumbs, go into a thumbless grip with all five fingers on one side of the bar or external rotation in the shoulders. Finding a proper grip width is our second piece that we're going through and we're looking to basically find how close can you grip without having to compensate and losing tension. So in a low bar squat, we're basically looking for your ability to maintain thoracic spine extension, meaning you can keep your upper back fairly stiff and not have to drop your rib cage and round out. You can keep your head relatively in line with your body and not slip into too much of a forward head posture. Uh, and you can stabilize yourself and breathe while you're in a low bar squat. Now, in a perfect world, we could have everyone in this really close position here and they can keep tightness, they can breathe and they can do everything that we're looking for in that low bar squat. But frankly, that's just not something that's realistic for most lifters, especially if you're more muscular or just higher weight class lifters where there's just more body mass to deal with. So there's a certain point you can see, even with myself, I'm about 170, 175 pounds, depending on the day, that if I went really narrow grip here, I start running into issues on physically my triceps run into my lats and I actually can't get tight and I'm just sort of resting on my elbow tendons and my wrist tendons here. And so I can't really hold the bar even on my rear delts because I'm just gonna snap my wrists off. It's not very tight. Uh, I'm not a big fan as a coach of passive uh, positions. I really like to get all my lifters to own the positions and hold the positions they're in with muscular tension as opposed to just resting something. That's a generally fast track into tendon and joint issues like tendonitis, those kinds of things. So if we can sidestep those, one less thing to deal with with your training. So finding your grip. Try to get my lifters to start out in a prone position, so laying flat on the ground, and we just get into a little shoulder mobility test and find what can they actually control without even having a barbell. So we start you out laying flat on the ground, and you're gonna have a PVC or a dowel or something like that that's fairly light, but it's gonna mimic the shape of a barbell. And we're gonna start you out where you're laying flat, you feel like you can still stay braced, and your head can stay down, ribs stay down, back stays fairly flat. And we'll start you out at the edge of the dowel, you bring the bar up and pull it back to your rear delts where you feel like you can get tight with your low bar position. Bring you back to the start and we bring you in and eventually there will be a limit to where you feel like you can't actually go any further without arching your back or contorting yourself in some way. So. Whereas if I went here, which is too close for me, I can't actually pull the bar to my rear delts. I run out of room, my forearms, run into my biceps and there's no real working around that. That's a structural limitation unless I lose a lot of muscle, which I'm not gonna do. So won't worry about that. Instead, I'll work on trying to find how close can I get while still being able to control. From there, I take that grip and we go back to the barbell. So once we found that grip with the dowel, we're just gonna simply take that same width that you're at on the dowel and put you onto the bar. And from there, we'll get into part three where we go into developing tension and really fine tuning where that grip sits. But simple as that, find your active range that you have in your shoulders, work on it, and then get you under the bar, go from there. If you can't control the range, don't use it. Part three in our series on low bar squats and rack position is getting into the idea of developing tension and owning where that low bar position is on your back. So we've established a thumbless grip and finding a proper grip width for you at this point. Now we're gonna get into how to actually cue it and get more tension 
and more stability when you're actually training. So very simple cue here, the idea being pulling the bar across your back. So I see a lot of lifters think about trying to pull their shoulders back or pull their wrists back and really working on very open chain cues, meaning that they're kind of moving themselves away from their torso. If I pull my shoulders back and let's say I'm in, in this low bar position, so I'm here, right? And I pull my shoulders back. Well, I'm gonna snap my shoulders off probably if I really pull my shoulders back far enough because my shoulders are now off my rib cage, my head pops forward. And as you can see, I almost snapped my wrist just demoing that. So I wanna try to avoid that. Obviously a little bit of an extreme example here because you're not gonna go whip your shoulders back with a heavy squat, but those mechanics are still at play. Instead, I like to work with what's called a closed chain cue. Uh, and that just simply means we're trying to work with everything as a system and bringing everything tighter together. So the cue I like to use with this is bend the bar across your back. So imagine like you've got a nice whippy deadlift bar or a PVC pipe or something like that and you're actually trying to create some bend and you're using your spine and your rear delts as the fulcrum for that bend. I'm here and visually you'll see right off the bat if I'm just letting the bar rest it kind of crushes me but if I'm bending the bar across my back by pulling my arms down and pushing my spine up right away I get way more tightness that bar stays way more stable on my shoulders and I can breathe with that as opposed to here where I have to rely on a lot of accessory breathing muscles and lifting the bar up to get any air in in the first place at which point I'm not even getting proper abdominal pressure. Find a way where you can feel that ability to pull the bar down against your back and push back up with your spine and you'll feel like you get a tighter coupling with the bar where the bar stays more stable in your shoulders. And on top of that, your upper back will stay stiffer because the bar is not crushing you down. You're actually owning that and you've made your rib cage, your delts and the bar all one unit. And then you can go through that movement. You're able to create more tension, which leads to more stiffness, leads to more strength and you know, hopefully more PRs. That's it. See you guys next week.